Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'm talking to you about field jackets. Now what you can see in front of you is a video that I took while I was in Montana in uh, June of 2012, so that's this year just gone. And what you're seeing is a uh, large section of rock which has inside it the jawbone, uh, the jugal I believe it was, but I wouldn't stake my life on it, of a dinosaur called Gryposaurus. I can't remember which species it was, but there, were th there are three species recognised today. And what's happening is Kerry in the jeans there and myself in the stupid hat are going about making a field jacket with which this uh, specimen will be taken back to the Museum of the Rockies lab and prepared out. Now what we've done, you will have seen at the beginning of the video, is that there was a layer of uh, essentially very wet tissue paper or kitchen towel lying on top of the specimen. Now that's there to act as a buffer to protect it from knocks and scrapes and from the plaster that we're using to cast the specimen. Um, what Kerry's done is he's gone around the sides with plaster to uh, make sure the rock holds itself together as we're doing it. And then over the top we're putting these overlapping layers of uh, burlap, or for us uh, English people it's uh, hessian sacking, impregnated with, as you can see there, plaster of Paris. And what we're doing is, we're, as I said, we're overlapping this, and then in a minute what you'll see us do uh, is... Um, start rubbing it down and uh, smoothing it all off with our hands. But the point of these, these uh, excuse me, the point of these field jackets is that these rocks and the specimens found in them are very fragile when they're in the field. And what we need to do is to protect them. So we'll use, as I said, some uh, kitchen towel, or in some cases you can see on the uh, left here, tin foil, just to cover the specimens up, protect them. We cover them in this field jacket and that protects them for the duration of their travel to wherever you're going to take them, be that a university or a museum or somewhere else. Now we've just disappeared off the screen there and that's because we had to go and wash our hands because the plaster of Paris does dry up fairly quickly. So what you're going to see now is uh, we're going to start uh, filling in all the gaps, all the bits of hessian that have lost some, uh, some of the plaster or didn't have enough plaster in them in the first place. Uh, we are filling in those holes and then in a minute as I said you'll see Kerry and myself start smoothing off the, the jacket with great care um, because believe it or not plaster of Paris when it uh, dries out it can be very very sharp so we need to smooth that specimen off in order to uh, make sure that when handling it no one damages themselves or hurts themselves in any way. Um, and what will happen is uh, about two days after this film was taken the uh, specimen or the jacket had dried out enough for us to flip it over and then for one of the other diggers to start uh, chiseling away at both the jacket and the rock to pare it down somewhat and get rid of the excess and then field jacketed the other side of the specimen which obviously you can't see it here because we're still working with the rock in situ it hasn't been moved it hasn't been touched uh, and then once it's been jacketed all over and all round what happens is uh, the underside jacket is allowed to dry and then a couple of uh, days later it gets labelled, so uh, the find number, the bone number, catalogue number, location, the quarry, and the digging team that found it. That then goes back to uh, the museum, and as I, said, as I said, in this case that's the Museum of the Rockies. Now this is quite a small jacket. If it had been larger we would have had to put bracings on, be that uh, iron bars or splints of wood. But thankfully as this is only about, uh, I don't know, 30 centimetres or so, we didn't have to. Anyway, that's the end of the explanation. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it's been interesting for you. See you another time.